Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Jay and welcome to Simple Church Online. Whether you missed last Sunday, you're checking us out for the first time, or maybe even watching out of state, we're so glad that you're a part of our community. And we're praying today that as you watch, God would use this to bless your life. Enjoy the message. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, again, I want to kind of go over what this series has been about. Again, uh, it's go. It's, it's, it's time to take the gospel out. And we've talked about uh, the who, what, when, where, and why uh, on this whole idea of going. Today, we're going to discuss the how. But I want to go back over uh, the why, how, when, where, all of that stuff. And so uh, we're going to go to Matthew uh, chapter 28 to do that. Again, this is called the Great Commission. And Chase alluded to it during the song. It's exactly right. This is the call. This is the, the lion to chase for every Christian, every Christ follower, doesn't matter what church you go to, doesn't matter what denomination you are, doesn't matter how young or old you are at being a Christ follower, this is the call for everyone who says yes to Jesus. And these are some of Jesus' last words before he goes to heaven, so we really want to pay attention to what he had to say. So Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse 18, Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth, therefore go... And make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So the why we do it is because Jesus said so. Because Jesus was passionate about this. Because Jesus shared the news that, 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 that he left the 99 to go find the one. And he says there's more rejoicing over one person who comes to faith in God than over the 99 already believers. So we need to change our picture. God doesn't celebrate even a church setting as much as he does as one person coming to faith in him because he's willing that none should perish. That's the whole reason that Jesus died. We've got to change our mindset on that. It does not say, hey, I've been given all authority, guys. I'm about to go to heaven. I just need you to make sure that you go to church at least like three out of four times. Like, if you need to sleep in one, that's fine, but check it off three out of four. That's what I need you to do, right? No, he says, go. And don't just go, make disciples. And don't just make disciples, teach them everything that I've obeyed you. And we have, in our minds, and, and I'm, I'm guilty of this too, is, is we've kind of pushed that off to the church. We've pushed that off to more righteous people or people who know the Bible more. Yeah, you go do that. And Jesus is like, no, you go do that. Like, that's the call of every Christ follower. So the why is because Jesus said so and because we have this joy in us, treasures, treasure in jars of clay that's for the world to see. The where, Jesus tells us again in Acts chapter 1 that we're going to Judea and Samaria and Jerusalem and to the ends of the earth. And so local, national, places we don't want to go, that's Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth as we learned about Africa last week and, and the deaf camp there and the amazing things that happened. So that, that's where the who is, well, my neighbor. And as the guy said, well, who is my neighbor? And Jesus said, no, nope, wrong question. Just be a neighbor. <laughs> like, who can you be a neighbor to? Then that's your neighbor. So it's, it's everyone always. Everyone always is our neighbor. That's who we're supposed to love and share Jesus with. And what are we supposed to share, as, as Matthew shared? Well, my testimony. And, and it's as simple as I was blind and now I see. I, I walk through this, this darkness and now Jesus has shown me the light. And I don't always get it perfect, but one thing I know is that I was blind and now I see. And then we share the gospel. And again, that's our job. Every Christ follower, if you say yes to Jesus, and it's a learning process and it's a growth process, but it is your job to be able to share the gospel with other people. And we're going to talk a little bit about that because it's going to be a big part of, of what we do here today. But that's the what that we share. The when do we share. And if you were here last week, I appreciate you sticking with me on some very difficult scripture there in Matthew chapter 24. But we share now. But we don't share now out of fear. We share now out of urgency because we want everyone to have a homecoming, Right? When I heard that song, Chase had sent us a list of some new songs, and I heard that song, and for this series, I was like, that's what we need to do. Because every single person who walks the face of this earth deserves a homecoming with Jesus. Every single one. And we've started dissecting who gets to and who should and my sin and their sin and groups of people, and everybody deserves, actually nobody deserves a homecoming with Jesus, but everybody gets a homecoming with Jesus because of what he did on the cross. 
and everyone deserves to hear that good news, and it's our job to take it to them. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's get really practical for just a second, okay? We have spent the last year very intentionally being internally focused on growing as Christ followers, as growing together as family, and again, I've celebrated this before. Let me celebrate again. I'm so proud of our church. I, we have seen such tremendous growth this year, not numerically. Uh, even, we have, but I don't really care too much about that. I have seen a closeness like maybe never before in 22, 23 years of ministry now. I have seen people hungering to know more about Scripture, uh, asking questions about the Bible, asking things that I don't know. I love all of that. I've seen people take care of people. We have walked through great tragedy here. We've walked through a lot of sickness here, and I've seen our church take care of people well. And so this last year, I've, I've been so impressed with what God has, has done, um, and, and what I've seen is a core group of people come together. Uh, and, and I know a lot of people like, I don't know if you know how many people we have, and I don't know that I can tell you for sure on that, because I, I, I just don't care about numbers. But we, we have averaged about 180 people in this auditorium all through summer, which is incredible. It's, it's well up for us. Uh, with kids and everything, we average about 250 people on Sunday mornings, which is, is fantastic, right? And again, it's not about numbers, but as we are healthy, as we take care of each other, you will naturally grow. And so God has been bringing us together, uh, and, and it's been incredible to see that even through summer when you're supposed to dip, we, we did not see any dip in attendance or anything like that. And so we have a great core group of people. And so for this last year, we've been really working hard on that for a purpose, we have been bashing the American church for a purpose, right? We've been challenging on some really difficult things for a purpose because we collectively at Simple Church have a lion to chase, and that is to go out into the world and make disciples. It's not to come to church and be comfortable and be safe and be, and be happy with each other. That's all fantastic. That's a byproduct of what we're supposed to be doing. And so for this new season of, of Simple Church, we're, gonna, we're going to be taking it out into the streets, and we're going we're gonna to be sharing the good news of Jesus with other people to bring them in. Because you know why? Because there's a lot of people out there who are going through sickness. There's a lot of people out there who are facing death, who, who, whose loved ones are going to die this year. There's a lot of people out there who have no hope. They need a family like this. They need a Simple Church. Not because we're great or anything like that, because we're full of people who I believe love Jesus and want to take care of people. There is a world full of people that need that. And so collectively, as a church, we're going to be passionate about discipleship and evangelism. Those are not sexy words, okay? <laughs> Those are not like, we're going to do some really cool stuff. Now, on top of that, we're going to do some cool stuff. And we're going we're gonna to really push to bring new people in. And there's nothing wrong with being attractive and doing some cool things to do that. that that's all fine. Um, but that's not going to be the focus. The focus is going to be discipleship and evangelism. Now, there's a couple ways uh, that we're going to do that. And, uh, again, this is where it's going to get in the weeds a little bit. Okay, we've been talking a lot about kids' ministry. And one of the things that we want to do is we want to make sure that when people come into our, our church, into our kids' area, that it is safe and it is unchaotic and it is comfortable because for us, we're all family now. And when we go back there and things are a little bit crazy, it's fine. Like, we know each other. Like, someone's kid runs off. We're like, hey, someone get that kid. You know, like, it's all fine, right? We know each other. But I want our mind sh mindset to shift to when a new person walks in this building. And the first time you hand your kid off to some stranger, it's overwhelming. Whenever we had Emma back in, what was that, 2007? Is that, golly, we're old. Uh, back in 2007, we, I worked at the church that we attended. And when I went to hand her to, or you probably did, I, I, I think I came back there with you, but anyway, people we knew, I still was like, please take care of my baby. Like, you know, like I know you, it's, it's a little bit overwhelming. So we have to shift our mindset a little bit to say, hey, we want to be ready for new people who are going to be here. We want to be prepared for that. And so we've done a retooling of the, kind of the kids volunteer area. Now, some people have had questions uh, and maybe I should have shared this earlier, uh, but when it comes to retooling and everything, Zach has, pa our pa uh, interim pastor, kids pastor Zach, has taken the last month off. This was just, he just needed a, a, a new season, a break, uh, nothing changing with him. This was just uh, kind of poor timing on what I said there. So if you've been wondering, it has nothing to do with Zach. He just took the month off. And a matter of fact, he's, he took his son, uh, Owen, for his 16th birthday to New York City. So this, his week, and he always takes his kid on the 16th birthday. So anyway, uh, he's adjusting to some new normals in his life a little bit overwhelmed with work, so he just asked if he could take um, August off, and we, we totally granted that. So he'll be back again next week, 
But we've retooled uh, the kids volunteer area, and it's all, I, I tell everybody this, I don't care if you're 10 people or you're 1,000 people or 10,000 people, kids area is always the most difficult to get scheduled and have volunteers and all that. So what we've done is we have asked 16 people, and they have graciously accepted to be lead teachers for the next year. Okay, that's a huge commitment. Give them a hand. Did you hear what I just said? <laughs> 16 people committed to being in that classroom once a month for the, for the next year. And, and so what we, want to, what we want to have is we want to have consistency back there. Um, we want kids to see familiar faces, and so that's going to help do that. And so what we're going to ask of you, and I'm going to reiterate this at the end, but we're going to ask, we, we've asked this a few times, and I get that, but we're trying to do things a little bit different. We have completely wiped our kids' area uh, volunteer list, and we're, going to, we're starting fresh. And so we want anyone who wants to be involved in kids, in kids ministry at the end. I'm going to have a QR code for you at the info desk. You can get signed up there. But anybody who wants to be involved in kids, we're going to want you to sign up again, and we're going to get you plugged in. It's going to be a little bit different because it's really going to be spread out because these, these teachers have committed to these positions. Okay, so I think we're going to see a whole lot uh, more consistency back there. I think it's going to be when, uh, when people come and they drop kids off, you're going to get to see familiar faces and things like that. So I'm really excited about that. I so appreciate all the hard work that's gone into this. There's a lot of people behind the scenes who have made this happen, and I'm so th appreciative of those 16 people um, and some of their family along with them as well that will serve uh, that, have, that have signed up for that. That's, that's a huge commitment. And be praying about this in a, in a year from now. We're going to try to get 16 new people, unless some of those 16 want to do it again. That's great too. But be praying about it if that's something that you would commit to and, and God would do for you. Again, I get this is a little bit different for a Sunday morning talk, but this is really, really important for the future of what we're doing. I want people to come in here and be, be, feel very comfortable coming in and worshiping because what we have to understand, the mindset, and this is for every area that you serve in, the mindset is we are going to do everything we can to remove every barrier and distraction from them so they can come in here and worship and meet Jesus. And when you're watching kids, you're not, just a, a, you're not just daycare. You're not just watching babysitting a kid. You are making it possible for the parent to come in here and experience a life with Jesus. That is huge, people. I, I hope that you understand that. When you're working security, you're, you're making it safe so people can come in here and feel comfortable to hear about the Word of God. That is huge. And, and for those that serve at the info desk and, and the kids check in and, and ushers and greeters and all those people make a decision about church 7 to 15 minutes within being at a church. So many times before the pastors got up and ruined it, they've already decided whether or not they're going to stay, and that's because of you. And so on all of our serve teams, we really want to have a mindset of, of I want us to prepare this place for new people. So we're going we're gonna to be forming some teams that are specifically focused on new people. Uh, that that's their goal is to make sure that when someone walks through those doors and they don't know what they're doing, that we go to them and not overwhelm them. Okay, we don't want to be like, hey, we're so glad you're here. They're like, oh, you guys are nutcakes. But, you know, we, wanna, we want them to, to come in and feel welcome and, and know where to go. And we're going to do some signage to make sure that they know. So we're really going to have that focus on new people coming in. And a big piece of that here, you want to see, we're going to get really in the weeds today. One of the biggest pieces of that, ready for it, is planning center. Okay, so I know this, again, this is a weird Sunday morning conversation. For those who serve, you know about Planning Center. If you've never served, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Planning Center is a database, um, uh, what's it called, the whole uh, uh, software uh, program. Anyway, it's got, a, it's got a name for it for churches. It's a, it does everything for churches. It's, the, it's the, the, the conglomerate of information. Anyway, I don't know what it's called, but uh, there's, there's an actual name for it. Anyway, we use this um, one to, to make, you know, of course, put all of our people in and know who's who and all that, but it's our communication system. Um, our ties and offerings go through it. I mean, it literally does everything. And so if you serve on a team, and I hope that you do, and today you can get signed up if you don't. There's lots of places to fill in. We, we are going to make sure that everything runs through Planning Center, okay? It is, it is a great system to make sure that everybody's on the same page. And so as you step into kids' ministry, the, the, you, we're not doing Facebook and, and text and email in all different ways. Everything's going to run through Planning Center. And so much like if you're on a, a team and you have a group me, Planning Center is very similar to that, okay? We, you can talk to each other. You can form groups inside of it, all those things. So I get this is a lot of information. Again, this is the how. These things are really important. We have to be ready for when new people come in so that they can feel comfortable here, okay? So again, if you're on a serving team, yes. 
Yeah, okay. Ser services, if you serve, then you're on the services app. The planning center is the big conglomerate with all the, the people and the checks-ins and the registrations and all that. So uh, services is what you've seen probably if you're serving on a team. You've clicked yes or you didn't click anything or you click decline because you're going to sleep in. Anyway, services is, is the big piece that we'll kind of talk through. We're going to have training videos available for that. So all kinds of things coming up to make sure that we're all using that same app and, and, and talking the same language and all that stuff's really important. Okay, again. This is all very important. Lastly, on what we're going to do as a church, um, other than th these are kind of just little internal things that we're doing. It's our social media. We're really going to start hyping that up. I'm not a big fan of social media, so I've really kind of let that be on the back burner because I just get so tired of social media. But that is the way the world communicates. And we want to take what, what Satan can use for bad, uh, especially since college football started, and we want to take that. <laughs> Luckily, we're in separate divisions now or, or whatever uh, uh, with conferences now and hopefully maybe there won't be as much bad blood in, in Oklahoma. It, got, it just gets crazy like my goodness. Anyway, so we want to take sometimes what can be used for bad and we want to use it for good, for good and for God and so we're going to make sure that our social media is really reaching out. Uh, so those are just some, some simple ways here at church that we're going to do that. Now we've been praying and fasting and having big meetings about what does that actually look like to go out into the world. I'm going to be honest with you. I do not have a clear, I can't give you a clear answer on what that's going to look like for us right now. Um, how are we going to reach the community around us? I don't know yet. But I know that we're going to be ready for that. We're going to prepare ourselves for whatever God brings next. And I feel a lot of peace with God, whatever that, whatever that looks like, however ministry is going to look like to reach out, bring it. And it's going to be, it may be really different from what we're used to around here. And it may get messy. And I'm okay with that. Because we're called to go to the pain. We're called to go to the people and to share Jesus with them. So we'll, we'll be sharing more about, uh, you know, events that we're going to be doing and things that are going to actually happen. But these are the things that we're going to take care of right now. We're going to take care of our house and make sure that it's ready to go for, for, for new people. Okay, fair enough? Okay. That's a little bit in the weeds. Let me, get, um, let me get a little more personal with this. Okay, as the church begins to create programs and events and stuff to reach out, that's all fantastic. Let me say this. The most effective and the most biblical discipleship is and will always be one-to-one -one relationships. Let me say that again, because I, I came up with this. This is something that sometimes I read from other people. I actually wrote this down myself, so let me read this again. The most effective and the most biblical discipleship is and will always be one-to-one -one relationships. Okay? We cannot program discipleship enough. We cannot create enough events for discipleship. There are people you will interact with every single day that we will never see. Maybe we will. Maybe they start coming to church, but they, we may never see them here at church. And the greatest and the most Jesus-like biblical way to do discipleship is to walk the journey of life with people, do life with them, and share Jesus with them. That's the, that's the easiest way. There is no magic serum. There is no like, hey, we're going we're gonna to do this program and everybody in the world's going to be saved. There's, there's no magic thing, right? Each church kind of does their own thing. The magic is found in people going out into the world in one-to-one -one relationships and sharing Jesus with people. That's it. That, you want to know our discipleship plan? That's it. You want to know our evangelism plan? That's it. You are our plan. <laughs> I am part of the plan. That's it. And we've got to have a shift in mentality for that to happen. Colossians chapter 4, Paul says this. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. I like the NIV, it says, instead of gracious and attractive, it says, make sure that your conversation is seasoned with salt. What that means is that we are supposed to go into the world and the things that we say and the way that we treat people are supposed to naturally bring, bring flavor to the world. It naturally is supposed to excite people. It naturally is supposed to cause them to say, hey, what is it about that? My, my steak has nothing on it. My steak is bland. What's, yours is all salted up, and it's got some buttery steakhouse blend on it. Like, what's happening over there? We're supposed to be attractive. That's why Jesus said, you're the salt and light of the world. You bring flavor to the world. That's what we're supposed to do. And remember, the world doesn't see flavor right now. The world sees bitter and angry. That's why our vision... <laughs> 
can I restate this again? Is to change the world's narrative of God by becoming more like Jesus every day. As we become a deeper disciple of Christ, people will see a difference and we'll start to, to spice things up. We'll start to bring flavor to things the way that it was supposed to be. This is, this is not a, hey, pastor, hey, missionary, hey, person who's been a Christian for a long time. This, this is a command to every Christ follower. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. What I found, and we talked a little bit about this, is I don't think that, if I came to you and I was like, hey, uh, and you're a Christ follower, do you, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you? Yes, you would, I think everybody would say yes. Do you believe that, um, that he, was, he was risen again and he lives in heaven? I, I believe everybody would say yes. Do you, do you believe that because of that, um, that you are forgiven and that you have a place in heaven? I would hope again that you would say yes. And then I would ask you, do you believe that that can be the same for every single person in the world? And I think that you would say yes. I think that we can all agree on that. Those are the tenets of, of faith and scripture. Do the, do the, does the way that we live outside of church say that that's true? That, that's a question that I'm asking myself. Does the way that I live outside of church show that to the world? That I believe so deeply that Jesus came to die for them that I can't help but share that good news with them. Is that what my life says? I believe so deeply about Jesus that I can't help but live in a way that, that is attractive to other people, that brings flavor to this world, that causes them to say, what's different about that? I would like to think that I do. I know there are many times that I don't. I get frustrated with people. I get frustrated with political stuff. And I lose focus on what's really important. If we're going to see life change at all, and, and I, I love that today fell on Labor Day because typically you have your core people here and, and you don't have a lot of new people. And, and So I think this is an important conversation for us to have. If you come to Simple Church to feel comfortable, you're not going to like this next year. There's a lot of beauty that comes along with being a church. There are people that will take care of you. You walk through something difficult, I promise you, there are people who are here who will walk with you. There's a lot of brotherhood and sisterhood, and there's, there's so many great things. But that is not the point of a church. I'm sorry. The point of a church is to equip the saints, is what Ephesians tells us, to go out into the world and be the church. It is not to come and sit and be comfortable. It's just not. And, and there's got to be a change. If we... If we are going to truly see something different in this world that we live in. It is only going to happen when Christians go out and start living differently. That's it. There's no other change that's going to happen until that happens. I'm just telling you right now. And we're going to just continue to get frustrated. And we're going to continue to wonder, why are things getting so bad? And what happens is instead of saying, hey, maybe things are so bad because I'm not living the way that Jesus lived in the world and loving people that Jesus loved, we shift to, well, it's because this group that does this. Well, it's because they're the president, so we don't have the say anymore. And we can get so lost and so unfocused in, here's another question that I could come and ask you. Do you believe that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you through the Holy Spirit? I would, again, I would hope that everybody said yes. So do you believe that that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that lives in you can overcome anything that you're going to deal with out in this world and can give you the words to say to anybody you're going to encounter? I think that I would say yes. So then my follow-up question would be, do we live like that? Do we live like daily that every person that I interact with, if I want to, the Holy Spirit will give me the words to say to them and the way to treat them and the right, and the right things to say? This is not a pointing finger message, I promise you. <laughs> this is a introspective, let me deal with me kind of thing. Because I don't. I've been in ministry for 23 years and I still worry about what someone might say if I share Jesus with them. I still worry about how it might change the dynamic of our relationship. I still worry that, that I'm going to offend them in some way. I, I still worry that, 
you know, that I've done something dumb in my life, and they're like, oh, well, you think you're so much better, but I know this. These are all attempts from the enemy to deter us from what our mission in life is. Satan doesn't want you to go out and be flavor. Savior does, Satan doesn't want you to go out and actually make an impact and actually care about people. He doesn't want you to use the words that the Spirit will give you to actually change people's lives. He doesn't want you to believe that you can do any of that. Who are you? Who are you to believe that you can actually make an impact in people? Well, you, you, you barely even know Scripture. What do you, what do you think you're going to do? They're going to have questions. You're going to look stupid. Do you know that's the same thing that Satan says to me every time that I stand here and sing before I get up here? Every time, 23 years into this, and I still, every single, every single time, who do you think you are to get up there? Now, fortunately, I've grown enough in Jesus and believe enough in him and not myself to say, I'm nobody. <laughs> who cares? I'm going to get up there, and I'm going to say the words that the Spirit told me to say, and that's about all I do. <laughs> so I don't really care. Now, my prayer is that God gives me that same attitude when I go out into this world and I encounter people. And there's some days that I do really good. There are some days that it's easy for me. There's some days that I'm really annoyed. We went to the outlet mall. Um, when was that? Friday? I have very few pet peeves. That's not true. I probably have quite a bit. I have, <laughs> I have some that drive me really, really crazy. And one of the biggest ones is when you're smoking in a place that you're not supposed to. It makes me sick. It makes me cough. I can't stand it. And so we were, we were sitting there eating our Auntie Anne's, as one does, some with, uh, some with cheese, some with uh, the cinnamon sugar with the, you know, you know what I'm talking about, you know Auntie Anne's, enjoying life as a family. And then I get a waft of smoke. Now, I could have done several things. Could have ignored it. Could have went up to the person and said, hey, this will really bother my family. What I did is what I do a lot of times when I get really annoyed, I yelled, who's smoking? <laughs> And my kids, Dad, chill. Dad, stop. <laughs> I, it just makes my blood boil. Now, that's a, that's a, I get like a, a little thing, right? But it, it's such a picture of how quickly I can lose flavor and care so much more about my comfort and my needs and all those things and care so little. Who knows what that lady was going through? Who knows? Now, that doesn't make it right for her to smoke where she wasn't supposed to, right? Don't do that. But why? maybe I should go and have a conversation with her. Maybe I go and introduce Jesus, and she just leaves really quick. You know, like, like maybe that's the way to get her out of there, right? I don't know. How many times every day does that happen? How many times do I see someone on Facebook that disagrees with what I believe? And my first thought is, is vitriol and angry and hateful. If we really want to see a change in this world, it's going to be because we change, not them. Not them. They're not supposed to change. That's what Paul told, told the Roman church. I'm not, I, I'm not called to judge those outside the church. If I spend my time doing that, that's all that I would do. I'm, I'm here to judge people inside the church. <laughs> We're the ones who know. We're the ones who should be getting it right. And <laughs> we can't even do that. If we want to see any change in this world, it'll, be, it'll, it'll happen because we change. Because we change the narrative. And let me, let me get on a soapbox one more time, and then I promise not to do this until next week. <laughs> <laughs> one of the greatest ways and avenues to either bring hate and gasoline or to bring love and water for the fire is social media. That there is nothing in Scripture, just because social media is not in there, that changes what we can and can't say on social media. We are still called to the same, we are called to bring flavor and attractiveness for God's glory on our social media. And so if you want to start this journey, I would just say, take hold of something that you can take a hold of right here. It is your fingers that type this out, that text this out. I'm praying that we not only keep from being hateful, but that we begin to take social media back and use it for God's glory. Post scripture, post positivity, 
post a quote you see from somebody. It doesn't have to even be a Christian, but post, put some positivity out into the world. Now, I'm going to get into a couple practical things, and then I'll wrap up here. We are going to ask you, not, not we, that Scripture challenges each of us to go out and be the light in the world and to be the ones to, to disciple. It is not the church's job. We say that again. It's not the church's job to bring people in. That's, it's a byproduct of what we do, but it is the job of every Christ follower to go and make disciples. And so use your social media in, in a way that can make that happen. That when people are going through a tough time, they remember seeing your scripture on there. Maybe they'll reach out to you. But one of the things that you can do when it comes to reaching people is to invite them to church. There's nothing wrong with that. The church can come along and be a part of this discipleship process with you. That's a win-win. And so one of the easy things that you can do is use your social media to invite people to church. Again, I don't, you know, I try, I can't call out everybody, but if you know Gidget who sits in the back there, if you've seen her social media, she writes up stuff about Simple Church all the time. And it's beautiful, and, it, and it, it's just true life. And then she just says, hey, I've got a church, and we haven't got it figured out, but man, we love Jesus. Like, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. I was blind, but now I see. So share stuff out. Be passionate about your church, not because the church is good, but because you believe this is a place that people can come and know Jesus along with you. We have to shift our mindset. Now, how do you do that? How do you, how do I, how do we go out into this world and actually reach people? Because I guarantee you everyone in here, for the most part, does not feel comfortable with that. There are some crazy people who God has given a spirit of discipleship and evangelism, and they do, they do not care. They will come up to you, and they will tell you all about Jesus, whether you want to hear it or not. And that is beautiful. That is not me, even as a pastor. I do not have that in me, okay? For most people, one of the biggest fears, one, is public speaking, but two, is speaking about their faith. So you couple those things together. How do we go out into this world and actually do it, okay? Vince Lombardi, who is the, the, the great Packers coach, the trophy's named after him, right? He's, he's really well known. He started every single season with these grown men <laughs> by holding up a football. And he would say, gentlemen, this is a football. <laughs> these are guys, some of them who have probably been in the league for 10 years by now. And the very next thing he would do, he walked out to the field Gentlemen, these are the sidelines where you'll be standing. These are the hash marks where we're going to try to get first downs. This is the goal line right here where we're going to try to get across. These are the goal posts where we're going to kick fill goals. Now let's get started. And, and Vince Lombardi didn't start with, hey, we're going, we're going to run X wing right to run triple. Where's Trent at? He could tell me all the things. That's crazy now. You've got to have 64 adjectives in there. You know, he he said, hey, let's go out there, let's work on offense and defense, let's work on blocking and tackling. What was his point? Keep it simple. There are basic things that we can do every single time to be successful. So when you go out into this world, keep it simple. Most of your interactions are not going to be, as Matthew talked about this, most of your interactions are not going to be a chance to share the full gospel in that moment and have, you know, some airplane experience where you have this great story about how these people came to Jesus. Most of the time, 99% of the time, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be a journey, a relationship that you build with people who are around you. Keep it simple. Make a list. Who is around you that you know needs Jesus that you know you can have an impact with. Make that list. We're not, I'm not asking you to go preach on the corner. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people you interact with every day. Who do you have an opportunity to share the good news of Christ with? The teacher, the one sharing, is not you. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit. Release yourself of that. Scripture tells us that when we don't know what to say, the Holy Spirit tells us what to say. Now, that doesn't mean we don't prepare and plan and go into it with nothing to say, but trust in the Holy Spirit. He'll tell you what to say. For some of you, that seems so crazy, and we're going to talk about that here over the next couple of weeks, about how the Holy Spirit can help you in that. And understand, the focus is just helping them see obedience in you. Like, just you sharing with them, just you walking this journey with them is a bigger message sometimes than anything that you can say. Just be there for them. Just care about them. And then as God opens up those opportunities, share stuff with them. Know stuff and share it with them. Romans Road. Again, go home and research it. 
323-58-623. Walk them down that road. When they have questions you don't know, we love to answer questions. We don't have all the answers. We will go study. We will help give you tools to study with. There, there are no excuses you can come up with that one, haven't already been thought of, or two, that work. <laughs> There's no excuses. This is the call for every single person. But I think here's the most important thing, and I, we have all other kinds of things that I want to say, and I don't have time to get into that today. How can we go out into this world and, and make an impact? Luke 9, 23, this is what Jesus said. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily and follow me. I, I can't really give much more information than that. I mean, Jesus said it all there. It's a, it's a shift in mindset. It's getting up every day and saying, God, who do you want me to interact with today? Who should I care about today? And it's taking up my cross. And one of the things that comes with taking up the cross is remembering the cross. It's remembering what Jesus did. That's why I love that line at homecoming, that my debts were nailed to that old rugged cross. It's waking up every day and remembering what Jesus did for me. It's waking up every day and remembering that he went to the cross for me. I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. There's nothing that I could do for him to be willing to be nailed to that cross and to hang there in one of the most brutal ways ever and to die of suffocation there hanging on that cross for me. How can I not then go out into this world and say, hey, I know this world's broken and I know there's hurt and there's pain, but there is someone who forgives all of that. And there's someone who's preparing a place for us that's perfect and there's not going to be this pain and there's not going to be this sorrow and there's not going to be this sadness and there's not going to be this division. There's going to be joy and happiness and tears of joy and people are going to be laughing and dancing and all these things are going to happen and I want you to be there with me. How can I not when I've been forgiven such a great debt? But I have to remember every day because life is busy and most people most people don't care about other people or, or most people don't uh, push people to the side or whatever because they are mean or mean-spirited. They're just busy and apathetic. It's a shift in mindset to say, I'm taking up my cross because Jesus took up the cross. And I can't help but allow that to be my fuel for life. And then when I do that, when I'm closer to Jesus, when I'm reading scripture, when I'm closer to the spirit, what naturally flows out of me is God's spirit to the people around me. And that's when I begin to change the narrative of God. That's when people begin to look and say, hey, this Christian thing, there's something to it. I don't know what it is, man, but I, I, you seem happy. You're, you're always kind to me. You, you pray over me sometimes. Like, there will be a change that will happen because God wants this even more than we do. He's willing that none should perish. And so I would just encourage you over this next season for Simple Church, go back to the cross every single day. Wake up every single day and remember what Jesus did for us. Once again, thank you for stopping by today. We'd love for you to be a part of our family at one of our services. You can find out all of our information at simplechurchtulsa.com. And we'd love to pray for you any way we can. So please message us and we hope you have a great week.